na, na, na. You Play gotta song, fight Jeff. for your right. Are we really ready to start, or am I just oh, starting yeah. the song? No, we're ready. Huh? All He's right. Go, you're going. Hey, shut up, everybody. Go. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a podcast designed for the world of low dollar racing and oddball car culture. Whatever kind of La Champ or Track Dog you run, SCCA or NASA, we won't discriminate. We even think you Drifto Hell Flush guys are all right, as long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussion, tips, tricks, news and notes in the world of low buck racing, and if you can handle it, Chrissy will give you just the tip. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. This is Jeff. I'm mental. And we are everyone racers. Thanks for coming back and listening to another Achin Harda show episode of our podcast. And that is why, Rush. Why, why, why did you take why did you take my verset out? Because I was talking to some of my students today and they taught me how to say very good in Russian. Fair enough. Uh, I got nothing. So, Achin, it's just a very good episode. Show, just a very good. Just yeah. very good. Uh, welcome well, to let's episode. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I don't yeah, know. I know. Right? <laughs> presumptuous. It. This is going to be a great show. Yeah. I, I figured well, that yeah, was a. Fair enough. You feel free to put your word in next week's episode. Welcome to episode <laughs> thirty-four. <laughs> what you working on? Since I know what everyone is working on, except mental. Let's start there, mental. Uh. Actually, nothing. Last week, it was extreme experience. I got some yard work done, and then we're uh, doing a JROTC baton death march this weekend. What, is that? what does that even mean? Uh, baton death march. It's a lot of ROTC units. It's it as a memorial. Well, it's that- in memorial of the baton death march. You're not, you're not killing people. Baton. Was it well, a baton? Uh, I, don't, a baton. I, I don't know. It was, it was bad, okay? And uh, okay. we're memorializing. And, so, and then... Uh, people with batons. Yeah, <laughs> we're twirling batons, and so not yeah, not a whole lot going on there. Got a literally no work in the garage this week at all because I've been getting home late every night. But I rode the bike today, so Woo-hoo. that's Woo. a bonus. All right, I guess I'll go next. Um, go I am a toe pig loser, and the toe pig loser project still continues to go. New, new internet uh, video. The the guy who I gave the professional wrench who I gave the avalanche to with the rusty broken spring returned it after a week and said, we didn't work on it. You're going to have to cut that thing off to which I was like, yeah, jerk off. That's what I meant. Cut it off and put on a new one. So I yeah. Didn't transplant looms ever closer. Uh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm so upset by this. The race also looms a little bit closer. So I know. there's that. And a trailer has to get to the track. Even though you're close, you still have to get it there. Unless you I can know. pull it, which I don't think you can. I we're gonna have to pull you, it with your RV. Like, no, no, like you. Just yeah, no, pick. not gonna happen. <laughs> well, so yeah, so my friend, start hauling, buddy. I, I, my, my honest opinion is my friend who is the wrench who said who looked at it and said yeah, bring it around was outvoted by either his boss oh. or the owners of the shop. Just don't even start it. I but, do not want to touch this piece. Uh, of- and and. He's a partial owner, so I'm kind of like, I guess he was outvoted by his partners. <laughs> <laughs> That's how terrible my truck is. Anyway, also, Defenders received last week. It was uh, suggested on Just the Tip that you actually make sure that your uh, your your teammates yeah. are actually recertifying follow things. And a uh, follow-through yeah. happened, at least on one thing that I was working on. The yes. Defenders have been received. And uh, we love our Defenders, and they are still recertifiable by Next Gen, even though they are like a reformed company. So a uh, big shout-out to Next Gen for helping us out. Oh. Uh, and then I'm going to go on. We had a work weekend. Woo, woo. Woo. Uh, we did theming. We did costuming. We did unnecessary and probably unfunctional arrow, but it looks way cool, and it probably isn't going to fall off on the first lap, uh, at least the parts it, that I did bolt on. If it doesn't fall off, if it falls off, I will cry. I will just cry because we've done so much work on it. Okay, I guess I'll go because I'm next, and I also yeah, help go. with all of the crazy arrow and the crazy work weekend, and we worked really hard on some things that make us look cool um but i am concerned that if we if it falls off we worked really hard on it and I'll, i will cry i don't think it's gonna fall um off. we, we should mention not. we should mention this is for the civic right sure civic Since nobody knows weekend. i mean somebody out there is thinking like 
What are they putting on Arrow on the ombre? You know, no, no. Oh, Civic. no, definitely Civic. not. <laughs> no, just the Civic. Uh, and then this weekend, I got all my lemons box. Oh, I'm sorry, this week, I got all my lemons boxes out, packed the paddock stuff, uh, ran up and down the basement stairs about 50 times. And today I did my Costco round one, uh, in addition to mowing the lawn, which was nice. And just packing, trying to get stuff together and make our menu and work with uh, a couple of our teammates to make sure we got food. And um, uh, And also, Chris was away this week, so he did nothing. Oh, yeah. I just read ahead. Damn it, Chris! Why did back. you put that in the notes? I just got back. Go ahead. And, <laughs> yeah, I see. I, uh, we were because we were following uh, on the group. So back. go ahead, do so, do the first thing first. I yeah. it, on the Civic. I vented the hood, so behind the radiator, hook bump the hood down, put some supports in, cut a little notch out of it. It looks pretty great. I think it should help um, with our cooling issues there and help get air out from under the hood. And took oh. apart the front end. And made a splitter uh, for the front out of plywood with some mounts. Got the mounts all made. It's fairly easy to remove with captive nuts. Just four bolts, so that's good. Uh, Dave and Bobbin came down with a Cressido. It helped him do some corner weighting and alignment. And while I was at, uh, out for work, I had to go up to Fall River, Massachusetts. And today we got out of, wor- out of our meeting a little early. So I was in Rhode Island during the work day. So I went to the Rhode Island DMV. It was a complete S show. <laughs> it, the line... I honestly, I thought that was a picture uh. of you at the airport. I thought that was just like, oh, this is, me, this is me in TSA security line because it wasn't moving and it was like ridiculous. Yeah. And then you and then I looked at the, saw the first picture that said Rhode Island Department of Motor Vehicles. I'm like, oh God. Yeah. So, so for those of you new to the po- new to the podcast, let's mention so that sorry. we are. Yeah, we're sorry. Why are you tuning into 35? I don't know. <laughs> Um, 34. 34. 34. <laughs> we, we, they tuned in next week. Two two years right. ago, so. we had a race car, a Citroen SM, and Jeff has been trying to get all the materials together to get a New Jersey title that we can actually sell it with, and has utterly failed every time he tried to correspond with the DMV from Rhode Island to who get is, a freaking title. Who is flirting with you? you know she why? was obviously flirting with you, Jeff, and you're so, just like... You know, now let's hear from Chris. What the hell happened today? Well, I went to the main DMV office in Cranston, Rhode Island, and talk about exciting radio. Going to the DMV, so um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I get the in Rhode there. Island. It's a big, big building. I get upstairs. I, I it's, it's check in, check in. Okay, great. I go to the check in spot. I stand in the line. I see what looks like. Okay, I see the check in thing. So there, you know, there's a, a few people in front of me, and then what looks like a small zigzag snake line, and then this yeah, can't yeah. be that bad. So over 20 minutes, I wait. I get forward about 10 feet in that 20 minutes. And then I can see around the corner. And then I see how long the snake line is. <laughs> it goes so far that if I've only moved the 10 feet in the 20 minutes, this is going to be hours just to check in, to say, here is the form I am trying to give you and I need an answer for. Unbelievable. Now, I had two of my coworkers sitting in the car because we were go, you know, traveling in a group. I apologized. I bought them lunch so I could you know, go do this. I told them they were on the Chris Abbott reality bus tour. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and so after I saw the line, I said, I, I can't. I can't do You can't this. make them wait. Okay. No. That's actually encouraging because I thought you actually got to talk to a human oh, and they said, no. hell no. Yeah, right. They no, were no, like, no, no we can't help was, you. What she said was, is, you're not that sexy Jeff Wake that no. I've been talking to on the phone. <laughs> Go away. Yeah. See, the, nice. the operation timed out and that is acceptable. So <laughs> yeah. we are not dead yet. Not dead yet. Yeah, not dead yet. Right and notes time. Not fooling anyone. You'll be stone cold dead in a moment. All right. Yes, exactly. No. That's so, what he got. Coming up this week, the good folks over at WRL have got their Can-Am Endurance Cup at Road America. And they've also got the uh, Super Miata SM uh, classes going there. And I actually reached out to Joey Todd. And he very, very politely asked that we not call WRL entry level endurance racing. So I said, right, we'll call it amateur level endurance racing. But and it's one of those things where they are trying to kind of step up from the the traditional crap can mentality. But they don't own the concept of Super Miata. They actually lease it from 949 Racing. But one of the things they do is they use these spec classes as filler. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had 28 spec racer Ford show up. So they did they worked them in as an exhibition race at Coda. So it's interesting to see some of these other organizations and what they're doing to just 
let's just get people on a track going wheel to wheel. So props to you, World Racing League. Well done. I hope your uh, Road America goes well. He was going to try and get a century list. He didn't get a chance to get it to us, so we can't really handicap that one. We've got Champ Car at Thunder Hill this weekend, but Champ Car only has... 15 entries listed on their website. It's like four Miatas, three BMWs, two CRXs, an RX-7, a Mustang, and a Firebird, and some other nonsense going they on are, there. They're so not even paying for close to that track with that many entries. No way. I'm serious. Now, oh, and honestly, like, really, it should be a great track day. To, you know, If you're one of those 15 right? entries, no. if you should on, be having a blast. Uh, if they're on the Thunderschleif, the five-mile-long course, long course at Thunder Oh, my Hill, God. They are yeah. never going to see anyone. <laughs> It's yeah. it's going to be so boring. They're going to be like doing crossword puzzles while they go around the track because they have nothing else to do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so in stark contrast to that, the folks over at Lucky Dog, six and a half hours up the road, they're at Big Willow, Willow Springs. They've got 61 entries in their race this same weekend. So I feel like there's a story there that, you know, because if you look at it, yeah, it's it's closer to go to, to Willow for the folks in L.A., but you got Frisco and all those people. And, and you guys actually know some folks out there on the West Coast, but it seems like most of the endurance racers on the West Coast are choosing Lucky Dog. Well, from what Do I understand, know? the West Coast region of Chump, and as Chump is regionalized, it's very different. Um, they um, The technical term, is, I think, is suck goat balls. So. <laughs> Sure. They uh, nobody likes them, as you can tell by their their corner cr- entries. And so, actually, a couple of years ago, the folks who run Lucky Dog had previously been associated with Chumps Management, and they um, politely declined to do so anymore. I think there are more colorful words there, especially the, <laughs> the at the the at the time leader of Chump, who was a polarizing figure, John Condren. Um, who has now been voted out by the board of the organization he started. That gives yeah, you a little bit that's of That's what I was going to say. Of, of He's it. no so, longer in charge. Yeah, and I think that's helping, but still Lucky Dog is now has a good a good group of people that, that like it, and I've heard good things about it. And so, hey, that's where people are showing up. 61 entries, that's decent. That's like half of what Lemons get, so good for them. Yeah. So, do, uh, Go ahead, Chrissy. Does, do you think there's anything different about the tracks? So Thunder Hill is a, a common track. People go there. There's a lot of events that I think that are kind of chump race ish, you know, like lemons runs there. And, and there's other, like, it seems like one of those popular ones. I don't know anything about big willow. Is well, there something willow that Springs might be drawing is, a few of people? I think they're I'm both pretty good. If anything, I would say Thunder Hill is probably a little bit better than willow Springs, especially if they're running the long course. So yeah. it's not like one of them is running Laguna that, that people are going to go. Just to <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, Laguna. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just, that's why I mean I didn't know. By the way, if anybody ever runs Laguna, we are going. We are packing up the car. We're calling oh, fish. We're renting Trump, something. Trump used to do it all the time. Oh, yeah. I think uh, I, I think it's on the Lucky Dog schedule. Yeah, really. Yeah, yeah it's not that good. No, for both of them. Like a... Lucky Dog's also another one of those legit. Let's just figure a way to get you on track and have some fun kind of racing organizations. I know Jerry Ringle and uh, Todd Carver run with them. They both enjoy it. Cool. Very good. So, right. uh, moving on, uh, then we I'm, got... I'm on Champ, Champ Car's website trying to figure out where which track they're running. <laughs> Go on, keep going, Mental. I'll report back. So, so this past weekend was the Lemons race at CMP, the spring race, the non-parade race, so I feel better about missing it. So, uh, last week we talked about that, and I think we're going to go through some of our favorite entries, but the Moldy Carlo uh, won first and also took overall, and then there was Rook Boy uh, in Class B, Idle Clatter won, which is the uh, the truck. Great bunch of guys. Everybody loves those guys. And they won Class E, and I mean definitively, by like 17 laps. And then the Silver Bullets took third overall. Chris, what do you got? My favorite thing about the Moldy Carlo is that it has one gauge. It has one like two-inch oil pressure gauge in front of the driver, and that's it. <laughs> that's their dash. That's Done. It. Yeah. The rest of it is the seat that's of the pants. That's crazy. And it, it is, it's loud, it burns gas, it tears up tires. It's a great car. Well, so then uh, our, yeah, our friends of Silver Bullets, they finished third overall in what Chris, I think, described uh, last year as that faster than it has a right to be, 351 powered, 240 of theirs. And then the Knox Vegas low ballers rolled in there, but apparently the uh, crap staying uh, hoopty corn had transmission shifter issues, lost fourth. They finished 17th. And one of their guys, a friend of ours and a friend of the show, Robert Simpson, actually ended up running with idle clatter. So they had a good time coming in there, it, well, which is it's just great when you get that kind of cooperative nature now chrissy you had picked the starlet how did those guys do 
I think Jeff is going to talk about them. I oh, didn't pick them. Oh, I just fine. thought it was cool. Like, I just thought, you know, yeah, what, what is the notable thing on there? I, I, I have it. I have the notes here. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry so, yeah. ca- Castroil, the Toyota Starlet, which is like one inch across. Don't forget, a little tiny hatchback, rear wheel drive. 25th overall, received B class. B class. That's very shocking. That. It, it, well, it must have been. B. It must have been pretty well prepared so, yeah. to get second B. They uh, wouldn't be the, Well, <laughs> now we're, let's listen to this. Sputnik Sentra now with thirty percent. Now we thirty percent more roof. Also <laughs> ended up in Class B. We are hearing from the people there because the Class C cars were so terrible that these <laughs> normally Class C cars ended like, up in Class like, B. like Sasha's car. Well, that's like great Sasha's to car. hear. Actually, that's wonderful news. It is news. actually. Yeah. yeah. So is Sasha, God's, God's chosen class. Absolutely. <laughs> Sasha on his Facebook said, and I'm going to do a Sasha voice so you can punch me in the head when you see me later <laughs> next weekend. I know the race is good because my neck and pec still hurt and I'm still giggling inside. So he ran a 203.5 lap time at CMP. That's a 1.6 liter four door grocery getter. That's a Sentra, right? Two yeah, year yeah. old tires. And rear brakes haven't changed in seven races. They don't do anything in the back of a center anyway. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, it doesn't. Uh, well. It just rolls along. <laughs> it's speaking of front wheel drive cars. <laughs> terminally <laughs> confused. Go ahead. They, they finished twenty two of sixty one. Apparently lost forty five minutes for some stupid errors, but stayed on track and kept turning laps. Uh, finished tenth and B, fourteen laps behind. Uh, uh, actually, no, I don't know what that is. Why that's there? But anyway, hey, Craiger said it broke a front wheel stud on Saturday, and hey, it, it takes a while to replace one of those in the Honda because you got to pull actually pull the hub out after taking the axle that. out. Yeah, that's I've done pain that. The ass. With the press, and yeah, well, they d- apparently found someone in the in the paddock with a press to do it, so that's good. What? So good for them. Um, they took my advice though, and they upgraded to better better fuel cans. So actually, and some practice the pit stops that helps reduce their pit times a lot because that's good. Because when I was there, I was sitting there watching them going like, really. Really? Really? We've been pouring <laughs> that one gas can in for a minute and a half. Really? Oh, that's yeah. What were they running? Were they running like lawnmower cans or no? One step up, yeah. like they were. They were race in quotes cans that the using. Oh, where's your air like, quotes? <laughs> a stock three, like three quarter inch clear tubing with no vents. And yeah, no, no vents, no nothing. It was sad. So I'm glad yeah, to no. hear they did better. The part that got chewed up there was that was actually Sasha who finished tenth in Class B and it was 14 laps behind uh, Terminally oh, Confused. Okay. Um, All right. Well, hey, hey, good job for them. They even though they had forty five minutes off track, they still did pretty well. So nice job, Craigers and Kurt. And lastly, we uh, have the Squirt and Coronas A Class nine four. Uh, excuse me, ninety four Lexus SC four hundred. Uh, they did one hundred and thirty three laps. That was Darren and John from uh, our team or close to our team. Uh, Darren said that three hours into Saturday, they had a head gasket fail. Uh, they fixed. Uh, they added bars and. At bars to it. Really? Bars leaks. Bars leaks. I know, bars I leak. Know. Yeah, I, yeah I know exactly. It is. Chrissy's, I just, Chrissy's reaction is right. Yeah. Really? really? <laughs> okay. Well, cool. Um, and then the uh, then they had electrical glem- gremlin and uh, the blow the main fuse, and they were able to trace that back. Hold zip ties to trans hold the transmission solenoid water as well. Whatever. That's whatever. what killed they, it at Road Atlanta was that main fuse blew. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, see, I never knew but, what it was. That yeah, blew. I don't think I did either. Yeah. So. So then apparently the car ran great up until 10 minutes before the checker and the head gasket let loose again. Um, but John got a lot of seat times and now uh, they will figure out what to do for the next race. Oh, well, no, no. Read that, read that John, last quote because that is now brilliant. Now he gets to enjoy owning a race car, putting in a new engine. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad because at Atlanta, John got like zero time, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't yeah. like mental take it out and break oh, it? Absolutely. Uh, Oh, and then man. and then he got it out for like a lap and broke a hundred yeah, dollar it... uh, toe strap. <laughs> oh yeah, and it died. I think it died on track. Like I don't even think it made yeah. it all the way. Oh yeah, absolutely. Up years, Wade towing. <laughs> yeah, right. Mental, tell us about the midi. So the midi was awesome this weekend. Unfortunately, I wasn't there to see it, but our friend, listener, and sometimes teammate Adam Diamond took second in the Sasco International. Sasco International is one of the crews down in Florida that do uh, vintage race car preparations. They're the sponsor title for the series. So Casey Carden, who does a lot of uh, Champ and WRL uh, stuff, he's got a really good, a lot of experience with Miatas. Casey Carden prepped a Miata, and he ended up taking second in that, which is awesome on that one. And in the Concours de Lemon, 
our good friend and listener, Dr. Vlad Pop, entered a Trabi that he had bought because it looked exactly like the one his dad owned when they were living in Europe back in the day. So he bought this thing. It was a whole family effort. He surprised his dad with it for his birthday, and they took it out there for the Concours, and they won the Eastern class. And as a result, they received a prize package containing canned beets, whole potatoes, Russian dressing, and a lemon squeezer. And they were runner-up. Yeah, runner-up for the worst of show. Uh, but they lost to this one family-owned 1919 Franklin that was driven 500 miles up from Florida. And I actually had to Google to what a 1919 Franklin looked like. And <laughs> yeah, Franklin, man, that's a, that's a standard. Seriously, then. and they drove that thing from Florida. So props to miserable. them. I, yeah, I just it, like to mention that uh, you all made fun of me for speaking Russian in the beginning of the show. We've yes. done like four different Russian stories at this point. <laughs> Well, that what are we true. waiting for? That is true. Right. Russia, story does you. That's <laughs> I, thank you. And then finally, our good buddy and former, I guess, host or guest, either way, depending on which uh, show you watch, JG was out there doing the Skid Pad Challenge by Lucas Oil oh. and like, Grid Life Yo. And the team, the winner, was the uh, local guys here, the Kennesaw State University Formula SAE team. And I met that team at the Georgia Auto Show down there, and it's headed up by one of the teachers down there. She works in the business department, but she's the one that did the um, uh, carbon fiber molding for the intake. So that is a bad effing team. Good on them. Rock on. That's all I got. Yeah, yeah, I love guys. Formula SE. I was going to ask the Skid Pad Challenge. Was that in conjunction with a Grid Life? No, like, not in conjunction, but it's sponsored by Grid Life because Grid Life's okay. coming back to Atlanta in August. Come see me; I'll be one of the instructors. Did, did they get creepy enough, at all? Yeah, that wasn't creepy at all. Did they all get right. enough people at the at the Skid Pad Challenge to really like have that at a solo event? That seems like a not oh. a lot of going on. Well, it's a huge thing, though. They have those, so many different people and so many so different many. things that it's easy just to pick that, fill that in. Got three, it. Three years ago, when me and Steve the Dishwashing Fairy did it in the uh, ill fated Dotson pickup, I mean, it was, you were waiting 15, 20 minutes between rounds. They had, they had a, Probably a good 40, 50 cars. Keith Tanner was out there in one of the uh, their uh, Flying Miata v- supercharged V8 powered Exo sets. I mean, mm. yeah. So there's, All right. there's serious competition that shows up to the Skid Pad Challenge. All right. I have one more uh, story about communists. <laughs> the, okay. Those communists who run Ford announced last week that they are discontinuing all sedans that aren't the Mustang. So basically, they gave out a list of all the cars that aren't returning next year. And pretty much every single car, except for the Mustang, is being discontinued. Uh, They also announced that the Ford Focus is no longer going to be a car. It's a Focus active hatchback. So they're replacing the new Focus is like butched out with like cladding all around it like a Subaru (laughs) Crosstech Trek. And and basically the entire world is telling Ford how stupid they are. Uh, and they've been defending themselves all week. According to Jim Farley, Ford's head of global markets, basically sport utilities are the preferred body style. And hold on a minute. Turn my alarm off. For the sport utilities. Time, time to podcast. <laughs> yeah. no, I, no, it's time for singular. Sport. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, sport utilities. Shut up, I'm in the middle of the story. Sport <laughs> utilities are the preferred body style, and this they, they're saying that you know before the downturn in the economy, they sold a ton of cars. Now they don't sell any. He also pointed out that modern crossovers are nearly as efficient as sedans, so they're not worried about meeting cafe standards, and they think if someone comes in asking for a Focus or asking for a, you know, I don't even know what else Ford sells these days, they're going to be able to talk him into an Escape or whatever. Go ahead, Chris. What you got? I think this is totally fine because this means Mazda is going to sell more sixes, Honda's going to sell more huh? Fours, yeah, Toyota's yeah. going to sell I, more Camrys, I, which are all superior cars, or Civics, or Corollas, or Threes, or all those great cars that those three all make. Because um, certainly they're not going to buy Nissan because their sales dropped twenty eight percent in the slash report, which serves God. them right for making Ooh, terrible yeah, cars. Yeah, because they suck. Right. They yeah. make terrible cars. What are they going to run in NASCAR? What sticker Mustang. special are they? Yeah, well, I guess, Mustang. yeah, they have to, which is Because our GM's already running the Camaro, so there you go. Uh, right there. GM doesn't make anything right either. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of my what story. Yeah, spec racer stuff. 
So as previously mentioned, also this past weekend was Extreme Experience here at Atlanta Motorsports Park, just to keep it brief. Had a great time. Want to thank my buddy Vlad for bringing his brother out. Want to thank Don, who came out and took some rides with me. Also, Roland and Witt. You're not listening, but I did pimp the show to you while you were in the car. Um, both of those How do you guys, know they're not listening? Didn't you tell them that's to a, listen? That's a, I did tell them to listen. They I mean, hopefully they wouldn't start with today's, but, you know. It could yeah, be. yeah, exactly. <laughs> But Today both of them is guys, a fine they did, show, Chris. Uh, they did three rides, and they were they were good to begin with. And by the end of the third ride, those guys were leaning on the lead car. They were really, really hopping around the car. So this weekend was a fundraiser for my junior RTC unit. So Extreme Experience, oh, instead great. of paying a salary to me and uh, local hires that they would do to labor, they paid my ROTC detachment to bring cadets. When I told both Roland and Witt about this, they both put a wad of money in my uh, my pocket and said, take those kids out to dinner. So we did. We went and devastated the Olive oh, Garden. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good Roland. Exactly. So not really good on those guys. We had a great weekend out there. And the Iron Man Award, which always goes to the extreme experienced employee who just really makes the most, they gave it to the cadets because these guys were out there hustling. Oh, yay. That's very and, cool. Uh, so they did a they, lot? They really did. It was, uh, in fact, they're, they're warning me that the cadets I bring out next or this fall in November will not possibly be as good or as hardworking. So I, I went ahead and dropped that gauntlet to them just because. And All right. Speaking of my friends at Extreme Experience, who just today were on an airplane, uh, I was going to announce that crack the window. Take it, Jeff. So yeah, I, if those of you who have been paying attention to the media, you saw last week that a uh, woman actually died on a Southwest flight. She uh, window cracked and she got sucked out of it and she passed away. Uh, all of our friends from Extreme Experience were flying from Midway to Newark International, and they had to land in Cleveland because. The window cracked. They did not lose cabin pressure. Nobody got injured. Nobody got hurt. But uh, oh, yeah. but our friends were like in the row. Yes. Yes. They? Oh yes. Yes. Cow. Yeah, because I saw that Cal Sinisi saw... has. Who is what is he? Gent manager, event manager. He's What's the, his yeah, title? Yeah, yeah. He's the general operations manager now. General yeah. operations manager and a hell of a guy and a hell of a wheel man. He was in the row. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> window cracked. Him and Ollie, masks? the new uh, the new video guy. Yeah. Yeah. They did not lose cabin pressure. I did not see anything about masks. No, oh, that was, well, that was the funny. Was on like a CBS Evening News now interviewing that. Go ahead, Chris. Say that. Say what you're going to say. Uh, I said like if the, the last tragic time where the cabin's pressure did go, there were so many pictures of people wearing the masks totally wrong, like on their chin. I think like, you know, <laughs> on their head. All of them were wrong. Yeah. Like, uh, like, no, yeah, like they were it's bad. not hard. Like put it over your nose and mouth. Okay, it's really not that simple. Hard, but they're wearing uh, it like on their uh, ear, like or like a fez. It, 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 you it's don't not know. Pay attention. Safety briefing up front. Oh uh, yeah, right. that's why they do it. Okay. Go ahead on, Jeff. That, that should be just a tip this week. Actually listen to the safety it's briefing when you're flying. <laughs> speaking not. of our friends at Extreme Experience, speaking of racetrack, Extreme Experience puts you in the driver's seat of some of the world's best supercars at over 20 racetracks in America and Canada. No speed limits, no shifting restrictions, and no governors. Head to xxspeed.com to choose your supercar, find the racetrack near you, and start making a story of your own. Here's the deal, everyone. Seven model of exotic cars to choose from, 20 plus tracks, a year round location in New Orleans, Louisiana, pro instructors like Chris, Mental, or myself in the car with you, helping you explore the car's limits and learn how to drive the racing line. This is amazing. Save 25% when you use the code Everyone Racers. That's Everyone Racers with no space, everyone. Everyone Racers at xxspeed.com to book today. Extreme Experience, it's your turn. Woo! So, uh, right. do we do you want to go to listener feedback, or do we just Let's want to say that. hi to Chrissy's mom? You know, say, well, see, you blew it because we were going to do this really smooth transition. You know, no, we, we weren't. We never do. <laughs> um, hi, hi, my mom. Um, okay, so he hello, hello, Chrissy's mom. And let's uh, talk some listener feedback. So we did a well, bunch hang, of posts. Oh, sorry, this week. Quick, quick thing on that. The other, as Dave Carpenter was here the other day unloading the Cressida, <laughs> Chrissy's mom drove by on their way to Chrissy's sister's house, and I said, "Oh, there's Chrissy's mom," and Dave looks over and goes. Hi, Chrissy's mom. <laughs> she shouts <laughs> up the street. I don't know if Chrissy's mom heard that. So uh, that's, that's great. great. When we get the show on Velocity and we do it live, Chrissy's mom is going to be like a celebrity. That's right. Okay. So we did some listener feedback. All right, here's some listener feedback because we did a bunch of posts this week. So a bunch of people love the video that jo Jeff posted of the – Is it was it an Abarth 2000? It was – Abarth 2000. Yeah. yeah so oh. – Oh, yes. I, I oh. needed a few moments to myself after right? that. Right? A lot uh, of people did. So Eric M., uh -huh. who we'll talk about later, said, wow, this is truly the song of the people I want to hang around with. That was awesome. I love oh, that. Yes. Yes. Um, 
And so then there's another comment that we had, uh, we put out the main topic uh, on video, which we will talk about shortly. But uh, a few chimed in regarding what kind of cameras they use, some great or sad videos that the team collected. <laughs> uh, so Ben Dawson, who we already talked about, showed us some great footage of uh, the use of, with my air quotes, rag on a stick, because <laughs> that is our best way that we can handle our own um, uh, fogging. The fogging windows, yeah. yeah. yeah fogging windows. So, and then our own Dave Carpenter, uh, posted a picture of us using or him using one, and then uh, some more from Eric M about what he uses and why. So we're going to hear about uh, that uh, in the later in the program. Yes. So that was some listener feedback. Thanks for your comments. We love to hear from you. We will post more stuff. Always comment. You might make it to the show. So so here it is. Let's move on to the main topic. I'm going to do a bit of an intro here, and then we'll all just jump in. Or if you want me to go first, I'll go first. First, everybody yes, wants it, video. Yes. Everybody wants video of their car. Nobody knows what they're doing. I shouldn't say that. The, the entry level prices for videos as these are so cheap. Everybody's running a video camera. And I don't think a lot of teams put any thought into it. Um, a lot of new teams definitely don't put a thought into it. So we wanted to do kind of like video 101. We're not going deep. We're just talking about the basics tonight. Um, just we a are. Tip. Just a tip. We are going to do the basics tonight because there is some thought that should go on before you push pre play on that GoPro or before you spend thousands and thousands of dollars to make sure you have like four cameras on every bumper. You know, like it's it's really starts with some quick thought. And that's what we're doing tonight. We may do another show later, session two, where we're going to get into some advanced techniques. But there's session one. Anybody want to talk about goals or should I just go on? Go. Just go. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is you have to set your goals. What is it that you're trying to get video for? Are you trying to catch cool stuff? Are you trying to find an accident? Are you just hoping that you actually learn something from the track? Are you looking for something cool to show to your coworkers on Monday morning? Like, it's really important that you set the goals and know why you have a video. I feel like that's where so many teams just make the mistake because we've had this mentality in our society for so long. If you don't put it online, it didn't happen. So they spend all this time on video with no idea what they're trying to capture on the video. It's an excellent point, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah, uh, we, 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 have a, we have a term back in our days when we were a communications major, and it's called cinema veritas. And it's basically just pointing the camera at something and letting the world happen. And that's how people, I think, are approaching video Ooh. for racing. I like it's that not, phrase. That's not what you should be doing. You this is the first are the useful director. thing Jeff's, Jeff's uh, degree has brought to our show. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you did a not. degree, baby. No, but you are the director. You need to know what you're pointing it at. So camera placement is the first decision of every director. It's very important. What do you want to see? That's why I posted that great video of the Arbuff, because you can see everything. And, it's on and the roll here. page. And you here. can hear it. But you can see the driver's feet. Yes. You can see the driver's hands. You can see the road ahead. You can see the gauges. So these are all kinds of things that you need to know what you're doing. Not everyone has an open cockpit car, so you may not be able to get that great angle. But you need to make sure you can see the things that you're looking for. Uh, you can point the camera so you see the hands on the steering wheel or the steering wheel and the shifter or the steering wheel, the shifter and the gauges. So you just really need to figure out what you're doing. Um, GoPro and some of the other people have Bluetooth apps so you can see what the camera is seeing. Check it. Know what you're looking at before you push play. Before that I go sounds on the amazing. Next... Go mental. And I remember you're talking about the gauges. A couple of years ago, I was in the boat. And we had that red flag from those Audi clowns. And I'm sitting there and I go to start the boat again. And the camera was rolling the whole time, and the alternator gauge was dropping. And I remember Jim's comment on that was, "Oh, obviously the or sorry the starter uh, is not being heat shielded." He was able to glean that information from just watching me try and start the boat. It, it, it's an excellent point. Did, did you say Jim did that? My brother. I, I feel I feel like I'm in trouble, but I'm going to stick I, with Jim. <laughs> Jim did that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying Maybe so that, Jim is that, in charge of our videos what, so I don't doubt that he said ooh ooh look at the gauge I'm just yeah. not sure he would know heat soak I love my brother but he is much more electronic knowledge 
and computer knowledge. Like a knowledge. starter, is which is electric, Like a starter, Jeff. you're absolutely right. <laughs> anyway, let's get to mounts real quick. I'm going to shoot through these because I know you guys have a lot and we're running out of time. Roll bar mounts, sticky mounts, both work, but they need to be tight. Wobbly videos suck. Um, great video people are using, like the new iPhones have like image stabilization. It doesn't work in a race car environment. Yeah, it might have your shaky hand, but you really need to make sure those mounts are tight. And do not put it on your helmet when you're in the car. It will be completely Ugh. useless. Such it will make everyone useless. sick. Everyone yeah, will be sick call. that watches it. Just don't do it. Yeah, um, I have other stuff here, but I'm, I'm willing to punt to later because I think Chris has some stuff here. And if we don't get some of the rest of my stuff, that's okay. We can use it on video 102. Sure. Chris, go ahead. I think video is best used for coaching. And you can even coach yourself with your own video. I think some people miss that. They just have the video so they can show off something cool, like a deer jumps over your boat, but not actually. <laughs> you know, or, you know, to link, have someone else watch it. in the notes. Right, but they're not gonna. They're not trying to coach themselves. So, um, and there's a lot more to watch than just your lines and your traffic management. Sure, those are important, but think about smaller things like where is your head pointed? Like, you know, if you're going around a tight corner, your head should be turned, looking around that corner before, especially because you have a small viewport. Your head needs to be around the corner. There's a wonderful picture of, I think, Ayrton Senna driving, you know, into a corner but looking the other way because that's where the track is going. You know, and he's, even though he's not there yet. Um, how are your Ooh, hand movements? I want to see that. Yeah, are your are your hand movements smooth? Watch that. Or are you jerking your, your wheel around and jerking the car around? How are your foot movements? Are you getting to the pedals right? Are you making decisive moves? Are you using all the gas? Are you braking more often than you need to? You, know, you can tell all that from watching your foot movements. If you have a specific problem, video that area even. Like I've seen people who video just their footwork just to really understand what they're doing. And if it, by just putting a GoPro there, see what happens. So... Um, use this to coach yourself. Yeah, Jeff. Uh, I just want to mention that the Arbif 2000 video, I is the only or Abarf, sorry, the Abarf 2000 video is the only video I've ever seen which confirms that I am not the only fool heel towing toe out. Everything I've ever seen where like professionals heel toe, they're heel towing toe in, like hmm. heel on the gas and. And, and toes on the brake. I do it the other direction. I thought I was the only jerk off in the world, yeah. but that guy's amazing, and that's the way he does it. I do it. That's a, I, I didn't catch that. Nice. I'm a, a I'm a sidestep guy. Yeah, I, gra I have to grab half the foot. Yeah, exactly. I do like mental. The ball of my foot goes on the brake because that's got good yes. pressure, good tension, and then you rock your foot to the side to get under the gas. Yeah, kick kick that knee out. Yep. All right, yep. That's yeah, the yeah. show though. So anyway, um, <laughs> the other thing is get some video from someone who is better than you in your car. And compare, oh, laps, good compare idea. laps back to back, and mm, not even just laps back point. to back. Go corner by corner. Like pick a corner, watch your video a couple times, see what you're doing, then watch theirs, see how it compares, see what the times are, see what their exit speed is, what are you missing, and try it that way. See what they're doing differently. Use the video to learn. Mm -hmm. Chrissy, mm -hmm. what do you think about that? So I absolutely agree, and I like to have video uh, when it's available, especially for a track or car that I'm not used to. Um, and I have one instance in particular that I think I really learned a lot from. Um, I was uh, watching. I'm sorry. I uh, and watch with someone who and somebody who thinks differently and try to figure out where they're going to say to take the action. So lift here, break here. Um, I gained so much insight from watching the video and somebody else standing with me pointing out the action. And then I realized exactly what I was doing in that instance. And so the one thing that really um, mm. was very impactful for me when we were racing Hamza's car at NCM and, uh, and I was going into a corner and I was, not full gas and watching with Chris. Chris was really, he was sitting with me and we were talking through it and he said, did you lift there? And I said, yeah, because I'm coming around the corner and I'm going to slow down and you know, it was whatever I was doing. He's like, you really don't need to do that. And I was like, Oh, okay, this is great. So then the next time I was out on track, I was able to, you know, just, I was like, this makes so much more sense, but it's things like that, that I didn't really catch myself, even though I felt like my lap times were going well, that kind of stuff um, that I didn't realize. So I also just find so much value from uh, watching video, especially with somebody else and uh, having somebody there to, to kind of point things out for me. Did, didn't you trim like two seconds off from Saturday to Sunday at that race? Probably. Too? It, yeah, it I was think something significant. Cause I remember, I remember us talking about it and that's true. That's legit. 
Yeah, and I think it's it's just uh, you also just I would be before Chris ripped the wheel off of it. Yeah. And then, <laughs> oh and yeah. You, and then you had a hissy fit because that happened. And then I did. I, did. Then, I had a black cloud, but it was it was important because I needed to break that mentality. It was a it was fine. a bad mindset. And it's you fine. have very much done so now, so kudos to you. <laughs> yeah, but it, all, overall, also great weekend. But it, yes, it did absolutely make significant difference where I felt like I was doing okay, and it wasn't like, oh, you know, I'm not doing so well. Help me find this. But it was just him watching these couple little things that said, "Hey, what did you do there?" And then I realized it, and I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's exactly what I do there." But it's not something that I was self aware of. So, go ahead, mental. And I did the same thing at Ming, Ohio last year with Sam Smith. Sam Smith got in a car and said, you're lifting right here. And it was coming out of uh, madness of the carousel onto the back straightaway. And what he was doing is actually drifting the car over the hill. And we watched the video that night. And uh, he's like, no, try this. And the next day, I, I got in the car and there was a second and a half right there just in that corner. And unfortunately, because he's Sam Smith, he found another two seconds that was still faster than me. But it, it, it's that's a great point. And I've done that and not realized I've done that. And it's, yeah, it's key. And sometimes it was like, I was holding things back. You know, it was like, I was fighting the car. And then Chris was like, no, you could just do this. And then I found that the the car actually wanted to do that, but I was fighting it and didn't realize it. Things like that, that are just easy things that, that aren't natural, you know, huge changes, um, but they work out well. So video for coaching, obviously great. So I'm going to go into a com. This is my next thing that uh, I actually got on a soapbox last time when we are after our last show um, about etiquette. So this is uh, we're going to talk etiquette with video. So in the day and age with which we live, video is easy to distribute for people to watch and they're quick to criticize. So I'm going to suggest hear me out. <laughs> Don't make it public without agreement from those involved. So if you had an incident, talk with here, the other here. Team. talk to the other team about what happened. Don't talk, maybe don't talk to the driver. Talk to the team member in charge. We have had a few incidents where something happened. Other team backed the driver. They said that they were in the right. And then we watched it. Then we said, hey, watch our video. See what you think. And then they were like, wow, my driver really was in the wrong. Or, or you know, we could have done this differently. Talk to the team member. So the, in the, like I said, day and age of where you, everybody posts a video because everybody has video and it's different angles and it's different people thinking different things. Um, don't, you know, we can do better. So go ahead, Jeff. I just want to mention that the reason people are posting these is because, and we're, we're not getting too technical in this show. This is really about some best practices. Like the, the, I got you social media aspect of after the race posting things. It is so easy to post on YouTube and it is so easy to post giant long videos or to set to a specific second that like, like mental said earlier, it didn't happen if you didn't get it on video. So, so many people are uploading everything, everything. And that's maybe and, not and, the best thing and to do. 80% of it is garbage. Garbage. It's just lap, 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 lap of sucky lap, 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 lap. Well, and some of that is helpful. I mean, you know, it's nice to watch uh, 30 seconds of some other car going around a track that you might be interested in, but then you're like, oh, I don't care about drive that car or this part, this is not the best way to take those lines, that kind of thing. But etiquette, back to etiquette, uh, distributing car crashes opens the box to bashing. Um, and I, I'm going to say this, I have bashed video on the show. <laughs> so uh, only, and I'm going to admit it right there. So I feel like after the discussion that we had last week, after the show, I realized that I am passionate about this subject. And if you have something to show, talk to the other team, talk to them first, figure out and make sure that you're talking about it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go. There was a great uh, Lemons wrap-up video for uh, the one of the California races where two cars got into each other, and they, they introduced it as – and, of course, it goes on the internet, and everyone has a segment of what we like to call – uh, Lemon CSI, and they're all in their helmets, and they <laughs> the CSI music, and they're like, "See what happened here is the tire was on the outside was two pounds too low, blah 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 blah." And then it cuts back to the two of them, Nick and uh, Jay, actually going, "Yeah, uh, so in over his head, yep, in over his head," and they're done. You don't need to overanalyze this, and it it is it is god awful. You're not that good. You don't have a pro contract, Chrissy. 
No. So and very quick last best practice, make sure you don't load a full card into the camera. <laughs> so, <laughs> this at uh wait, wait, Barber's. Wait, wait, wait. Chrissy, why do you say this? Well, <laughs> we we just didn't look we didn't we didn't get any video at Barber, I think, right? Chris, we didn't get anything. We got no, some we on we got Saturday. some on Sunday, we got none on Saturday. Yeah, none Saturday. Right. No, because we were yeah. like, Oh, I can't wait to see what how we did this. Oh, Let, I let's know, use like, this. I had like an epic almost <laughs> crash moment when the Beatles spun in front of me because that never happened. Yes. And, and we saw that stands. Yeah, yeah, and so we said, Oh, let's watch it. And then we take it out and we're like, This card is hey, absolutely fun. We got my <laughs> my three warm up laps. That was fun. Right. Before. And then it, it was all it was like hours and hours of Hamsa uh, in an autocross and there was like nothing happening. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, well, OK, so we were sad about that. So make sure you check that you have free cards. That's all and, I got. And this is some of the basics that we were talking about. Like we didn't mention like have one person whose job it is to run the video have them make sure the cards are empty and the things are happening because how many days have we lost the video because Jim pushed go on the video like he does because that's his job and then Jeff looks back at his rearview mirror and goes I'm not sure anybody ever pushed the video let me push the button again (laughs) and you turn it off like there are so many videos that we've seen where it goes on in the pits And then it goes off in the pits just as the car is about to get on the track. So really, it's like have one person run the camera, have one person's job and tell everyone else, don't touch the camera. There's one guy who can figure out which cards are empty and which cards aren't. There's one guy who can figure out whether it's on or off. Just make it one person's job. And you say, are you you ready? Is it ready? And he says, yes. You're like, okay. So then when it's not, then you just yell at one guy. Trust him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you, you assign someone a job. If they don't do the job, coach them to do the job. But yeah, you don't need to go back and double. It's not like torquing wheels where if you have four people <laughs> do it, it turns out better. You know, That's right. Kind of deal. Or, you know, say like you get some clown that just mounts corded tires on your race right. car. Right. That's right. Yeah. Speaking I, I of clowns, Mental, what do you have to say on the topic? <laughs> <laughs> so. As Chrissy mentioned earlier, we we threw this up in there, and we got some great videos, and honestly, some honest videos of hey, here's us, you know, wiping the windshield off. Uh, we got some the the Hong Nor guys threw up some great ones of the Grumpy Supra, and but so I ended up with an extended conversation with one of the tet- well, the tetanus guy, uh, Eric Mercervi, and Eric. Eric, you sent me four pages of utter brilliance, which we are going to be applying on this. So the key point that I pulled out of this, what you need to look at is, and I'm going to parallel this with our sponsor, of look at it as a building block approach. Now, Jeff talked about, you, you know, we're, we're not even getting into the hardcore stuff in there. Right now, what do you want that video to go? Start with that one point. What are you trying to glean out of this video? Chrissy has gotten some ex- excellent points of how to go faster in there. Chris has used this as, as a coaching tool. We've all used this as an ability to go faster or in cases of near misses or something like that, not watching necessarily what you were doing, but what the other car in the video did wrong. And you don't need to post that on the internet. You just need to internalize that in your own team as their lesson. So we go through that. Now, once you've got where you mount that video and it is giving you all the information you need, well, can you build on that do you want to sit on your laurels when i first started with extreme experience back in 2014 we were using gopros with the little tiny sd cars half the instructors used to have to carry quarters because we'd have to pull the sd cards out and give them to the clients and they lost them now extreme experience runs a full audio visual dual camera gps overlay with speeds and lap times and you go straight into a usb drive which the clients throw on the um, onto the internet right away and then we also use that to make our instructors safer and better so every extreme experience weekend now begins with uh, what they call the five greatest hits. And they will go through and find where five instructors got it horribly, horribly wrong. You want to know which instructor from Extreme Experience always has a video featured in that one? I'll give you a hint. He's got really good hair and a funny name. Oh, and you shouldn't always... say that. People might be concerned about getting in the car with you. <laughs> well, and well, honestly, the, for good the reason. lesson learned was <laughs> the lesson learned for us to internalize, and this goes back to what Chris was saying, was uh, basically I put a client outside of their comfort zone because I wanted them to have a good time. And I was pushing them faster than they were comfortable with. And you could see it on the client's face. 
they were having a good time, but I, I, I made them do something they didn't want to do. So we've learned that. And, and not only did I learn that lesson, they've applied that to the company. So start with that. Get that basic. Do you want to see your hand inputs? Do you want to see your foot inputs? Now, once you've got that, here's the other key aspect. And this is what the four pages that uh, Eric sent us back up through is how do you anchor that to a time and place on the racetrack? Now, nerdy communications, and you can do that, nerdy communications, N-E-R-D-I-E dot uh, racingcommunications.com the link will be on the uh, show notes when you guys go to download this episode they've got all kinds of great videos go to our Facebook at Everyone Racers and look at the videos that Eric Maservi put up there they are brilliant not from the aspect of super cool driving because it's Team Tetanus who incidentally were runners up for the national championship not oh wait who won the national championship who did win the national championship maybe we'll find out soon maybe we'll find out maybe we'll find out (laughs) Maybe that'll be a theme for an upcoming race or show or show. But one of the things that they do is that so they do now they integrate the GPS overlay. They get G loading. They get lap times and they have the communications fed into the audio. The driver's microphone is always hot onto the video, which is great. Oh, so when the guy does something horrible. and you're like, oh, Chris curse you. Yo, yeah, you know. You know. Sure that's exactly what he says. Malt liquor. Ah, I hate you so much. Chrissy, and- Chrissy, you would love that, wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> so, so I don't know so, if everybody else would like that. So those of us who are watching at home who are not part of our team and never seen our videos, Chrissy and I talk to each ourselves in the car all the time. <laughs> we are chatterboxes. The difference is, is that Chrissy keys the mic and tells all of us, oh, no. oh my God, oh my God, what's that person doing? What's that person doing? Oh my gosh, I almost hit him. Oh, I, on no. the other hand, no. are just <laughs> talking through the other cars. I'm like, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Where are you? Jerk off. Jerk no. off. You're nice a jerk job, off. a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> that only- and, so that's what Team Tetanus does with all their videos. And they also, they, they've they like, like Three Pedal Mafia, all of their cars are interlinked. So it's, hey, yellow and flag two, yellow and flag uh, or, just had to three. Remember which, or, or which this guy, you know, hey guys, watch this car. They're a pack of idiots. That's so us. Usually they're talking that's about usually us are talking about, but they've got it all fed into their camera system. So they have for, from a coaching perspective, they have literally just almost a full situational awareness when they're doing their debriefings and it is brilliant. But the result of that is when they're loading these eight-hour videos that they've done the full GPS rendering onto, it takes them 45 minutes to an hour to render eight hours, and then it takes them a day or more to upload this to YouTube, and no one gets to watch anything in the house. There is no streaming when he's doing this. So there's a lot going on. Now, Jeff, I know you've got some input on this I, one. I, I, the, the input is like, seriously, Chris from Nerdy Racing, we're going to have you on a show. We are going to talk about this tech, but some of you want it now. So, Mentz, I want to make sure you plug his website one more time. We Nerdy are going to talk. Com. It is yeah. going to be, uh, we're going to throw it up on the Facebook. And it, right now, it's a lot of helmet uh, kits, really solidly made stuff. And it's made for the entry level endurance racer in mind. So, go to nerdyracing.com, go to our Facebook page and watch those videos that they posted up from Tech racing but uh from nola and from also uh uh, road atlanta because it is some brilliant brilliant stuff that they're doing over there so they they once they get one aspect of it down and it's the same aspect of racing get one turn down get that turn mastered and then focus on the next turn so they've done that they've mastered the video aspect they know exactly where they want their cameras there's a little bit of difference in the team one guy wants it way to the right so they can get the full view the other one wants it centered on that harness bar so they can see the gauges and see the footwork on that and then they're anchoring it to where they are on the track by both the gps overlay and the audio as well so they know everything that's going on as they're or when they're going to do these recreations now they started out with gopros and then they went to the gopro cheap knockoffs which were worth exactly what you paid for so the key point that another key point that chris made on this is invest in good software invest in good hardware invest in good wiring a key point to that wiring would be nerdyracing.com. So uh, I know I'm running over on this one. And it just, I was expecting a couple of key points on there. And Eric just sent us four pages of genius that we are going to have him on the show on and talk about video and audio part two. Understand what your goal is, master one aspect of it, move on to the next point. I swear that's my last bit. 
And I think that wraps us up for our main topic. I think it does. Yeah. Anyone else for the good of the order before we move on to our favorite segment, all Wait. about safety? Oh, I just read Chrissy's notes for this. Just, just the, the tip. Tip. <laughs> so now I'm concerned of that mental is. It's 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 when you say it, I'll laugh again. You'll know what I'm laughing about. Fine. I probably know what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> so um, I was struggling here. What are we going to talk about? Spring cleaning. So uh, it's just a good thing to talk about once in a while. Maybe you didn't realize how messy your space was getting. Uh, lots of these things are for people with smallest children or pets that eat things or something like that. So a lot of these are normal things, but you know, maybe you should take them into consideration. So keep your chemicals out of reach. Even cleaning chemicals can be a problem if they get into the wrong hands. Tide pods, just don't. <laughs> just like, just don't. Is it that hard to squeeze juice into the laundry? Uh, do they clean that much better? Just don't eat them. Just hold don't. my Tide pods. Look, don't. back when I was a kid, we had to eat our t- drink our Tide out of a cup, just like everybody <laughs> else. Just kids are just. I don't know what's the problem. More colorful. Just don't. Okay. Uh, so it's a popular time for pesticides. Do you know what's going in, what you're actually applying? Or better yet, do you know what your neighbor is applying? Because that's going to migrate to your place. Don't lick the lawn. <laughs> That's so, like, don't lick your don't lick your hands at a car don't show. Don't lick your lawn. Don't lick your hands because that might have pesticides or somebody yeah. else's pesticides on you. <laughs> You laugh, but this is a, these are important safety items here. They um, are. And I, I, I'm laughing not because you're telling people not to lick their lawn. I'm laughing because you, there are people out there that need to be told not to lick their lawn. That's I mean, hopefully what's... they're not licking their lawn. <laughs> <laughs> or okay. eat their Tide Pod. Or, or don't. Tide just pod. don't. Okay. So as you're doing uh, car work, how well are you cleaning up? Um, in writing this, I realized maybe we don't use them as much quick dry as we should be. So maybe you should like keep that handy or something like that. Stuff so to clean up your oil or anything you spill. Uh, and then put your tools away at the garage, at the track. Anytime you're done using them, just make sure you're aware of them. But some other people around you may not be paying attention. They're busy looking at their phones <laughs> at insta Twitter. It's the winner. And the I book can't. of face. Yes. <laughs> it's the winner of big book of face. There you go. Quit um, be safe. Quit. Yeah. Quit Graham. Yeah. Twit Graham. Nah, it's the winner's it's funny. The winner. I like it. <laughs> I put both of them down and I thought I like Insta Witter better. Go ahead. So uh, the oil dry thing. Uh, Nola, I'm, we're all standing around Steph Schrader's car. We're trying to get a fuel leak and we've been fighting with it. We're annoyed. We're tired. It's Sunday. We're trying to get the car back on the track. And Jay and Phil are over there because they think maybe she has a shot at a heroic fix or I got screwed. And we go to start the car and the fuel's still leaking. And we're all staring at it because we're annoyed and we're tired. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And Jay and Phil kind of look around at all of us and go, uh, so maybe some kitty litter on there. And, you know, it feels like, yeah, it's kind of a drag when the race safety officials go. And we realized, you know, we're just tearing up the pavement at NOLA because we were too focused on the problem. And we're ignoring the, the obvious serious issue of there was chemical gas spills from the yep. car. And we, yeah, and so I, I, it took me five minutes, but I was so focused on trying to solve the problem that I was ignoring the basics. And that's a key point. You know, no one is as aggressive with the fuel cleanup as they should be. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Don't spill Do gas or, or lick your lawn. <laughs> or, or eat like Instapods. Or yep. eat Instapods. Instapods? Yeah. No. It's my face. Tide my pods. face, Graham. My, my face, my Graham. Face to my face, Graham. I don't know. Chris, yeah. Yeah. why don't you tell us what's going on in the next show? Well, hey, for next week, we are prepping for NJMP. How what? about what? you? What? Yeah. We're also going to recap Champ Car at Thunder Hill, WRL at Road America, Lucky Dog at Willow Springs, and Mental is going to track out in America at AMP with Mark Baruth. And Mark is bringing a press Lotus Evora. Good for him. Was, yeah. If they made a target one of those, I would be in trouble. So um, that's it. You know, good race prep show for next week. We're all super, super busy with that, except Mental. But, uh, you know. Yeah, they go fly, arrive and drive. It's yeah, life of arrive and drive. Well, thank you for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, 
please hit the subscribe button on iTunes, also Google Play, and anywhere that you get your podcasts. If you have any questions or want to give us some show ideas, drop us a comment on our Facebook page, Everyone Racers, or like the Race Team Facebook page, Three Pedal Mafia Lemons Team National F and Champions. <laughs> if you'd rather not venture to avoid it is the book of face. Just hit us up or at Insta, everyone. Insta Twitter. Insta Twitter. Just hit us up at everyone.racers at gmail. Everyone.racers at gmail.com. Or find us Instagram or Twitter or wherever. Insta Twitter. Thanks again for listening. And until next Twat week, Graham. keep the shiny <laughs> side up. Keep the windows in your airplane. And keep the wheels down.